Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Well, I'm on this big series of gifts that will save you money and or time, and this one is a pet gift. Now, a lot of you probably give your friends and family gifts for their pets because it's probably the most important thing in their life. It is for Rich and I. We love our dogs so much. So, I thought it would be fun to make a dry shampoo for dogs and this is especially good for the very large dog that in the winter months it's almost impossible to bathe them and I have a friend that has a Newfoundland and I have a friend that has a bull mastiff so I'm going to be making their dry dog shampoo for them as gifts because I think it's a nice gift and for the people who have everything what do you get them so this is a very thoughtful gift in my opinion, because I love dogs. Now the things you'll need is, you'll need one of these like a Parmesan cheese shaker. You can get these all the time at um, thrift sh shops because people are thinking to themselves, why did I buy that? So um, you can buy them at thrift stores, you can buy them at garage sales, you can buy them at um, kitchen stores. I will look online and find the least expensive place to find this. I bought mine at a garage sale, so um, I can't count that. Or, if you don't want to go to that expense, because why bother? You don't really have to. If you have a quart jar, or this is a pint jar, I think a pint jar will hold this recipe. I'm pretty sure it will. And all you would do is you'd want to provide two of these lids inside because you're going to want one where you're going to poke some holes into it with a hammer and a nail. And then you're going to want one that covers it up or you want to cover it up with like saran wrap or something that will be a safe, you know, it'll be a, a safe closure for it. So those are the first things you need. Then as far as making the recipe for our dog shampoo, you're going to need essential oils. Now I'm really going to use lavender oil primarily in mine. A lot of people recommend tea tree oil because it's good for antiseptic. Like if there's um if they have um those dry spots that they dig, or I think they call them hot spots, or if they get cuts, if they're outside and they you know get get into trouble with their skin, this is kind of a nice protectant for it. This tea tree oil, but lavender oil is the just the everyday oil, and the reason I like lavender oil, especially for my dogs is it helps with allergies, it helps with burns, and these, you know, those really aren't my concerns. My concerns are it helps with anxiety and car ride anxiety, and my dogs are terrified of the car. I don't know why, but I'm hoping that I'm going to try it on uh, Honey for sure because she's terrible in the car. Oh, it also is good for car sickness. I don't know if having it on their skin will help with those things or not, but when you look up lavender oil and dogs, these are the things it says about it, like what it will help. And the recipe in general, the you're going to use cornstarch and baking soda as your primary ingredients. These help with the dog's overall odor and the oils in their skin so that they're not so stinky. And in the winter, you know, that's a big concern because they just get stinky. So I'm going to base mine on lavender oil. I also have spearmint oil and that helps with their weight and, and balancing their metabolism. Again, that's what it said on the site. I don't know if it helps if it's on their skin and, you know, maybe the scent of it makes them not you know, heavy. I don't know. But um, that's what it said on the website about dogs. Didn't say specifically how to use it to help them with that. But um, one of the things that I would do before you make this recipe is I would put your oils on a cotton ball and smell them together and go, do I like that? Do I not like that? Because if you don't like that smell on a cotton ball, you sure don't want it on your dog smelling like that. So it's just a thought for you before you do this. So in my case, I think I'm just going to stick to the lavender oil and um, here's how you make your recipe. You're going to want to take a container that you can um, that you can sift through because you don't want all of your ingredients to be clumpy. 
and we're going to use, oh, and I found this on um, YouTube by a lady named Tate, K-A-I-T, so if you want to see her recipe, she does it uh, differently. If you want to see her recipe, that's her name, K-A-I-T, she's on YouTube. And so we're going to use, in the cornstarch arena, we're going to use a whole cup. I'm going to just dump it in there so that it's easier because I'm using a quarter. I thought I could get the quarter cup measuring thing in there, but of course I can't. Then let's go to the baking soda. With baking soda, you only need a half cup. And I use generic from Walmart for both of these if you didn't figure that out. And I'm not sifting anything through until I get all my ingredients in here. Okay. Well, all your ingredients are those two. Then after you do those two ingredients, you're going to put in just um, five drops. <laughs> Got that everywhere. What else did you expect me to do? Five drops of the essential oil. Now, I'm going to probably use more of the essential oil because I'm going to want to make sure that my um, smell is really nice and strong it you can it doesn't it won't hurt the dog with lavender oil what they said was it wouldn't hurt the dog because it's a very basic um, essential oil but you don't want to go crazy with the other oils they said as I said they said five drops and I'm using lavender as I said and I am going to use more than the five drops I used 10 and then you just stir it around with a spoon and you want to make sure that you can get it to still come through the shaker part of your bottle that's why the you're only gonna um, you're only putting in as much as you are as far as the essential oils then what you're gonna do when you get when you uh, put it on your dog is you're going to take your dog outside that's the key part sprinkle it on their skin all over them and then you're going to uh, run your hands through their fur and then comb them to get it back out and when you get it back out they should smell fresher they should their, their hair should feel better and they should look better I'm going to smell mine to see if it smells good I really can't smell the essential oil, but then I have a really terrible nose, so we're going to go with, I just can't smell it. And then you're going to fill your bottle. I'm not going to torture you with the filling of the bottle part, because I'm sure you know, know how bad that's going to be with me. But I am going to show you the tag and the top of the bottle that I'm going to make. I just got your basic uh, mailing tags. I bought a big box of them because I wanted to use them just in cards and decorating in general and I wrote to and from or I, I stamped it on there and then I'm going to write the ingredients on here so they know exactly what's in there for their dog in case their dog has any allergies you know the last thing you want to do when you're giving a gift is have the person or the dog get sick from it so um, I'm going to say oh that's Honey, one cup uh, cornstarch, one half cup baking soda, ten drops lavender oil. Outside cover fur work in with hands then comb out and then I'm gonna write dry dog shampoo and then on the front I'm going to write um, reduces oils and smell and should help with allergies 
our cheese. Burns. Insomnia. Car sickness. Anxiety. Okay. And then I'm going to put a cute little piece of this. It's a it's not a twine, it's just a really thick thread that I bought this huge, huge piece of. And then I'm gonna tie it around my jar under the lid. Let me run it through my through here first. Sorry, I'm doubling it over in the center and I'm going to run it through my tag and then I'm going to pull the back through like that so that it hangs flat. And then let me fill this and uh, put my I'll put my tag on when we come back. I decided I was going to line my uh, inside of my shaker with some material and so I thought I would use this uh, can as like a mold for me to cut around. I just want to make sure it's, yeah, it seems big enough. And I'm going to go a little bit outside of the lines and I'm going to use pinking shears so that I have a, I'm definitely sure I have a big enough circle. And I'm going to have Rich just fast forward through this so you don't have to watch me do this really long involved uh, cutting. So we're going to take our lid off and I'm going to flip this over so the part that has the um, pencil marks on it, I'm going to tamp that down a little bit, is um, on the underneath. I'm going to put it back on. It's probably a little bit too long, but I can always trim it up later. And then we just make it tight shut so it's kind of cute. Then we take our tag that we made, <clears throat> put the two side up, tie it right underneath the top of our, or the right underneath the bottom lip of our jar. And I'm going to tie mine in a knot so that it stays on and stays tight. And there you go. I'll just cut that off with my ribbon scissors. If you're worried about it coming off, you could always um, put a little glue dot underneath there just to hold it in place, just to make sure. And there you have it. Now, I also did a little video on how to make a cute dog toy that's very, very inexpensive that you could put right along with this. You could tie it right to it if you wanted to. But um, that is uh, great. I wrote it on the other side. Dry dog shampoo for your dog or for a friend. I hope you enjoyed this and give it a thumbs up. Tell your friends about me on social media. I really appreciate it. And thanks so, so much for watching. It's been great with this series. Lots of fun. Thanks again. Bye-bye.